Einstein, Plato, Confucius, Beetlejuice, what do all of these historical figures have in common? Well, that would obviously be their elevated intelligence, of course. Across human history, there have been a plethora of geniuses, prodigies, and intellectuals that have been able to solve some of life's biggest problems or come up with the greatest ideas. But it got me thinking, what is the smartest a human can naturally get? To find this out, we first have to maximize both the nature and nurture of our hypothetical genius to truly find out how smart a human being can be. First off, the human brain already operates at the edge of feasibility, consuming about 20% of the body's energy even at rest. A brain much larger or more active would likely require more calories than the body could supply. Beyond energy, the very mechanics of thought impose restrictions. Neurons communicate via electrochemical signals that are vastly slower than the electrical signals in computers, creating a speed limit for thought regardless of neuron count. Memory capacity also sets a ceiling. Though the brain may store the equivalent of 1 to 2.5 petabytes, this immense capacity is not infinite where genetics play an additional role since intelligence is partly heritable. In developmental biology places natural upper bounds on how far the brain can grow in efficiency, size, and complexity. Now, even with a flawless brain, the mind itself faces bottlenecks. Human attention span is limited, and the brain filters enormous amounts of incoming data just to prevent overload. Working memory is another major constraint. On average, people can juggle about seven pieces of information at once, and even the most gifted individuals cannot escape this cap entirely. Sleep requirements further restrict intellectual growth, because rest is essential for memory consolidation and learning. Another thing that must be taken into account is this person's upbringing, since intelligence cannot develop in isolation. Even a person with the highest possible biological potential would require a stimulating environment, access to knowledge, and cultural frameworks to fully develop. They also need to learn multiple languages, since human thought often relies on words and symbols to reason. And because we want them to have as few restrictions as possible, we need to make sure their thoughts aren't held back by the limits of one single language. While mathematics and symbolic language extend human capacity, they still impose structural limits on how we conceptualize problems. Not only that, but yet another problem reveals itself, since human cognition is shaped by evolution rather than pure logic. It leaves our person vulnerable to biases and heuristics, such as confirmation bias, anchoring, and overgeneralization, where no individual, no matter how brilliant, can fully escape these constraints. Now that we have the biological restrictions out of the way, we can now dive into how time can restrain our person's intelligence. Because even if someone could learn with extraordinary efficiency, there is only so much knowledge and experience a single human life can attain. So lifespan limits not only the accumulation of wisdom, but also the time available to refine and master skills. Where aging only compounds this problem, as cognitive decline eventually reduces memory, clarity, and speed. So no matter how smart they are, our hypothetical person will only be the smartest person ever for a few years during their intellectual prime, capping how far intelligence can develop across a lifetime. Another pesky thing that is restraining our person's intelligence is something called the laws of physics. As I said before, this restrains our intelligence since biological nerve signals travel at about 120 meters per second, far slower than the near light speed circuits of modern computers. So no matter how fast of a thinker you are, a human can literally never outcompete a computer in processing power. Big surprise there. And not only that, just like computers, our thoughts also produce heat, restricting how long an individual can think for a given time period. So after learning all of this, we can make informed guesses about the absolute peak of human intelligence. Now, I know that IQ tests are an imperfect way of testing intelligence since all they measure is problem solving and reasoning. While missing qualities like creativity and wisdom, they still provide a framework of speculation. Most humans fall between 85 and 115, while geniuses are often estimated between 160 and 180, and rare outliers may claim IQs of 200 to 230. Though such results are controversial given the limitations of testing, since the only people that are able to create tests that are effective at measuring this high of an IQ are other people with IQs of the same caliber. So based on brain architecture, memory capacity, and neural speed, the biological ceiling for human IQ likely falls between 200 and 250, perhaps even approaching 300 in a near perfect case. Having an IQ this high would literally give a person superpowers, since they would learn at unbelievable speeds, juggle concepts far beyond the grasp of others, and see connections invisible to normal minds, like yours and mine. 
Even though creating or having such a mind in our society today is completely hypothetical, I just thought it was interesting to see what would be needed to make a human with perfect intelligence, and what the limitations to human intelligence are. And if you want to boost your intelligence, please like and subscribe Poppy where I hope to see you in another episode.